Hi Rock Kids, we're looking at God's timeless truth in the beginning or the very first pages of the book of Genesis. We started with creation, how God made everything. Our memory verse reminds us that creation is important. It says, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. Proof of God is all around us, and that should be enough for us to want to follow him. And so we saw creation in Genesis 1 and 2. In Genesis chapter 3, we saw the fall of man when Adam and Eve chose to go their own way instead of God's way, and sin enters the world. In Genesis 4, we saw Cain struggle with temptation, and we learned that we should fight against temptation. People don't. And so in Genesis 6, 7, and 8, we saw Noah and the worldwide flood. We're going to pick up today in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. It says, At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. Okay, so at this time, everybody speaks the same language. There's not different languages yet. You might remember that after getting off the boat, Noah's sons are given big families and they're told to spread out across the earth. So people are supposed to live everywhere. But right here at the start of Genesis 1 and 2, we see some people who decide to group up together and to settle in a place called Babylonia. They don't want to spread out. They want to stick together in Babylonia. Now, Babylonia might sound familiar to you. Did you recognize that name? It might make you think of Babylon, which is the same place, a place that's going to be very, very important on our timeline later on. It's the same place. These people are in Babylonia, and they come up with this great idea. The people who live here become experts at making and hardening and building with bricks. Everyone around them builds with stone, and because they're building with bricks, they can build bigger, stronger things. And so here's their plan. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. So their plan is that they'll make this empire for themselves, this big city with a huge tower that reaches all the way to the sky. This is a bad idea. At first, you might wonder why. It doesn't sound that bad. What's wrong with building a big tower? Well, first of all, did you hear why they want to build it? Because it'll make them famous. What they really want is everyone around them to say, oh, Babylonia, they're the best. They're stronger, they're smarter, let's worship them. They want the worship and praise of people instead of giving it to God. In fact, in their hearts, they're already worshiping themselves and not obeying God's command to spread out all over the earth. The other reason that it's not a good idea, really we see it when we remember that the flood wasn't that long ago. They said at the end of their plan, that way we can't be scattered. God said they must spread out all over the earth. When they say we're going to build a tower so high that we won't be scattered, they're saying not even God will be able to separate us. We will be stronger and mightier than him. This is not a good plan at all. The people in Babylonia are going their own way and not God's way, and they're worshiping themselves. It says in verse 5, But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. I love this because the Lord came down, like down from heaven, to see what people were doing. He was checking it out. Now, we don't know for sure, but other times when the Lord comes to the earth, it's actually Jesus. It's God the Son who's there on earth among people before he's born as Jesus in Bethlehem. This could be him. We don't really know for sure, but we do know that God is checking up on people and he sees what they're doing and he's very concerned about their plan. It says, look, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. God knows their hearts. And the last thing he wants is another like world where it's just like it was in Noah's day, where everybody worships themselves and does what they think is right. The people in Noah's day, their hearts were so hard that they couldn't be drawn back to God. God doesn't want that to happen here in Babylonia. And then remember Babylon in the future? If this Babylonia was allowed to build this big empire, they might use it the same way they do in the future when Babylon tries to wipe out all of the people of faith. 
they do that now, there's far fewer of them. They could be gone forever. And so for their protection, God has a plan. It says, Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. Okay, before we move on, first of all, we see the Trinity here again. It says, come, let's, let us go down and confuse the languages. God is talking to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're saying, let us go down and take care of this. And for the people's protection, they're going to scatter the languages. In other words, everybody's going to start speaking different languages now because God doesn't want them to become so strong and so mighty that they forget that they need him. It says, in that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. This is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them all over the world. So people are spread out. And the end of this chapter, Genesis 11, it ends with the line of just one of Noah's sons. We follow the family tree of just one of his sons, not the three that got off of the ark, but just one, and his name is Shem. You can check it out at the end of the chapter. We're gonna follow that family tree later in the Old Testament, but also at the very beginning of the New Testament, which is super exciting. But for today, the Tower of Babel reminds us of a timeless truth that God alone deserves our worship. During the tab Tower of Babel, the people in Babylonia wanted to worship themselves. They wanted to be famous so that other people would worship them too. They didn't want to go God's way because in their hearts, they worshiped themselves already. Praise God that he protected them by scattering the languages so that they could not build a kingdom for themselves that would actually keep them from God. They would never realize that they need to worship God if they had been allowed to become so powerful that everyone around them worshiped them instead. And praise God that he protects us too. He reminds us not to build kingdoms for ourselves, that we don't need lives of riches and stuff and even lots of friends. Instead, we should build God's kingdom because God alone deserves our worship. Jesus tells us this. It says in Matthew 4, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So remember today's timeless truth. God alone deserves our worship. Who are you serving? Who are you worshiping? What kingdom are you building? It should be God's. Are you worshiping him as the most important thing and building his kingdom first? Because God alone deserves our worship.